This is Brian Resney, president of Resney Wealth Management and host of the Resney Wealth Report. We have a great show for you this Sunday morning. If you have any questions about your stocks, bonds, mutual funds, your overall portfolio, the advice you're receiving, send your questions to Brian Resney at ResneyWealth.com. You can also visit my website, ResneyWealth.com, for great information and a bunch of great reports. One of our number one downloader reports, how to avoid outliving your money during retirement. It's a must read for any serious retiree or pre-retiree. If you're concerned about the advice you're receiving, if you're concerned about your return or outliving your portfolio, go to resneywealth.com, download any of our groundbreaking reports. Again, they're free and they're well worth the read for the education and I'm hoping you'll profit from them. Also, we do have some upcoming workshops throughout Florida, Adapt for Success investing for a safe and secure retirement. If you're a pre-retiree or retiree and you want to learn about how to increase retirement income, how to reduce portfolio risk from the next recession, how to grow and protect your portfolio and a whole bunch more, go to resneywealth.com, click on the workshop tab of course, and you'll learn about what I'll be discussing and times and location availability. You know, today I want to talk about the, how to pick the right advisor. We get so many questions at my office and on my TV and radio show about, Brian, how do I pick an advisor who really manages my money and who's really just a blatant salesman with all the conflicts of interest? One of the questions I received just last week was, Brian, I'm working with one of the big Wall Street firms, and this is the fourth one I've worked with in the last 20 years. None of them have done well by me. And how do you really pick somebody who's gonna work for me and actually manage my money? I'm gonna talk about that today. The number one risk that plagues every investor, whether you're 20 or you're 80, is who you entrust your money to. The sad fact is Wall Street banks and insurance companies don't want you to understand the difference between fiduciary and suitability. They don't want you to understand the conflicts of interest. Every single day, it seems, another Wall Street firm, a bank or an insurance company is find another half a billion or a billion dollars for wrongdoings against their clients. Yet people just like you continue to have your money there. Learn the facts on how to pick the right person. Fiduciary versus suitability. Why should you care? Bottom line is this. There are two types of advisory firms out there. One is strictly a sales organization working under suitability. That would be banks, Wall Street and insurance companies. The other one would be a fee only fiduciary in a money manager role. That's really what you want. But the problem is Wall Street isn't gonna educate you the investor that they normally work under suitability and that their interests are far different than yours. 90% of investors make the costly mistake that they think their advisor's a nice guy, that he's actually managing their money, that he actually has to legally work in their best interest, when 90% of the time they do not. Hire a real money manager, not a slick salesman from Wall Street. This happens all the time. You know, I do a lot of public speaking. I have a live TV and a live radio show, of course, and investors send us lots of questions. They come into our office, they have us review their portfolios, they hire our firm uh, to manage their wealth, and most of those individuals never really understood the difference between a fiduciary advisor and somebody working under suitability, which is strictly just a salesman. The thing that they tell me often is, but Brian, my person is, he calls himself an advisor and he's a vice president. Doesn't that mean he's an advisor? No, that person is no more an advisor than my pet lab. And at the end of the day, it's the questions you ask and how you can protect your wealth and your retirement. Fact, fiduciary standard, fee only registered investment advisors, not fee based, adhering to a fiduciary standard have a legal obligation to act in your best interest and actually manage your money. Less than 10% of advisory firms are fee-only registered investment advisors working in a fee-only capacity in a money manager capacity. Most of these firms are either working under commission or fee-based arrangements, which again, your interest then is put at the back of the line. Only work with a fee-only registered investment advisor, a true fiduciary. Fact. Suitability standard, the vast majority, about 90% of investment firms and their advisors slash brokers, which are really salespeople, work 
do not work in your legal best interest. Under suitability, these firms and those brokers actually work for the brokerage firms, not you at all. They're not required to give you the best advice. In fact, they give you advice that's downright lousy, expensive, and basically poor performing uh, investments. You need to do your research. If you have a brokerage account, you're under suitability. Advisory is what most people want, but most people unfortunately don't know the difference. They basically hire somebody with a personality that they met on the golf course or as a friend of their buddy Bob. At the end of the day, make sure you understand who you entrust your money to. Again, every single day you hear about Wall Street firms, banks and insurance companies being fined billions of dollars, yet investors like you don't ask the simple questions about fiduciary versus suitability. We're going to uncover those facts today so you can get the right answers and hire the right firm for your retirement and your life savings. Avoid these salespeople, stockbrokers, insurance agents, annuity salespeople, uh, advisors, financial consultants, wealth managers, or registered representatives, all benefiting from selling you investments or financial products for a commission. Anyone who earns a commission selling a product is working under suitability, they're not a money manager, and they're not working under a fiduciary standard of care, which is what you ultimately want. Fiduciary Registered Investment Advisor Questionnaire. Go to my website, resneywealth.com. It's your number one investment in retirement risk. It's a free report and it comes with a questionnaire. It's the 12 essential questions you need to ask your current firm or if you're interviewing firms to manage your money. If they will not fill out this questionnaire and sign off as a fee only fiduciary, then you have yourself a slick salesman and your money's not being managed at all. Read this disclosure. This disclosure shows up on a lot of brokerage account statements that you sign on and it talks about what you really have. Your account is a brokerage account, not an advisory account. Our interests may not always be the same as yours. Please ask us questions, make sure you understand your rights and our obligation to disclose conflicts of interest and to act in your best interest. We're paid both by you and by companies based upon what you buy. Therefore, our profits and our salesperson's compensation may vary over uh, products over time. Folks, that disclosure tells a lot. You as an investor need to understand that if you have a brokerage account that's not managed money, those firms can downright work against you, give you lousy, poor investments or be sold poor investments. Too many investors don't read the fine print and you're, you buy based upon emotions or a personality. Know the facts. The only one that you can blame for poor investment advice is yourself. If you don't utilize the questions, you don't find out if your firm's a fee-only fiduciary, anything less is just sales. Go to resneywealth.com. You can check out that free fiduciary questionnaire. Download it now. You can also attend my upcoming groundbreaking workshop, Adapt for Success, Investing for a Safe and Secure Retirement. We talk about the three biggest risks investors are, are being taken advantage of and how you can avoid those three risks. We also talk about how to increase retirement income how to protect your retirement portfolio. If you want to learn more about my Adapt for Success workshops throughout Florida and times and availabilities, go to resneywealth.com right now. Click on that workshop tab. We usually have one or two a month. They are excellent for pre-retirees and retirees alike. If you want to protect your money, if you want to grow your portfolio, if you want to know how to protect your retirement income from inflation, go to resneywealth.com right now. Joe from Davie, Florida. What do you think of target date funds? Joe, I'm not a fan of target date mutual funds and a couple reasons. First off, all a target date mutual fund is, here's a mutual fund company. They basically take a bunch of their own mutual funds, some good, some lousy. They package them all together and they basically do a stock asset allocation. It's that pie that you see a lot on your brokerage statement. It's basically a standard pie. Most of these target date funds have too much risk in my opinion because they are not flexible and their expenses often are high. And again, because they have to only encompass their mutual funds, you're gonna get some crummy ones, maybe with some decent ones. That's not good for your portfolio. You're much better off to build your own portfolio at a low cost ETFs or exchange traded funds often at a tenth of the annual cost structure of a mutual fund. Much better opportunity 
You can pick and choose to pick the best ones that are suited for your portfolio versus only being sold the ones through a specific mutual fund company. You can also go to my website, resnywealth.com. I would uh, encourage you to download our free report, How to Avoid Outliving Your Money During Retirement. It does talk about asset allocation, fiduciary suitability, and how to avoid outliving your money during retirement because inflation is gonna be a big impact for a lot of retirees in a 20 and 30 year retirement. Lisa from Boquilia, Florida. How can I position my portfolio for higher interest rates? How can I build my income for retirement? Are you taking new clients? Lisa, we are taking new clients. We do deal with higher net worth individuals. Our account minimums generally are $500,000 on higher. You can visit my website for more information and our phone number and to sign up for a consultation at one of our Florida offices. How do you increase your retirement income and how do you protect against rising interest rates? Simple. First off, rates are pretty much at a rock bottom price. They could go a little bit lower, but they can't go a lot lower. So what I would say is this, if you look at 15 years ago and you had the 10 year treasury somewhere north of, let's say eight or 9% and it's down to under 2% today, rates sure can go to zero, but they can't go really past zero. You are looking at really low yields on bonds with a lot of risk when interest rates eventually go up. Our Fed has stated that if the economy continues to get better, we stay on a uh, path to improvement, they're gonna start raising rates. They really need to do this. On a rise in interest rate environment, bonds go down. The longer the maturity, the more value you will lose on your bonds. So the best way to protect against rising interest rate is look at short-term duration, usually three years or less today, and also another opportunity would be floating rate securities or floating rate bonds. There's ETFs that are out there that basically you can uh, buy one ETF or a couple ETFs, they buy a broad basket of floating rate securities. These are usually very short-term paper, 90 days or less. They actually pay a pretty good return. And what's nice about them, if rates go up, you can get a correspondingly higher rate without the real volatility of long-term bond funds that will push your values ultimately down. So take a look at floating rate securities, also duration of ETFs or bonds of three years or less. Ultimately, what you're gonna to do to grow your retirement income is look at a strategy we call total return, growth and income together. We talk about this a lot at our upcoming uh, workshop, Adapt for Success. You can learn more about that at resneywealth.com. Larry from Boca Raton, Florida. I'm 65 years old. I have approximately $1.2 million in IRAs. I attended a dinner seminar and visited with the advisor. He has recommended I put my money into two annuities, Allianz and Aviva, with yearly income of around 60,000. Both have bonuses, but something doesn't seem right. What, should you, what would you do? Larry, that's a great question. First off, that person is blatant, blatantly an annuity salesperson working under suitability. I do not like annuities at all. Go to my website, resneywealth.com, download my free report, Why Annuities Are Dangerous to Your Wealth and Retirement. Read it. Let's talk about that income rider. First off, they're gonna give you $60,000 a year on your million two. It's gonna take you almost 20 years to get your own money back, Larry. So you're gonna give the insurance company a million two of your hard earned dollars, and they're gonna pay you back your own money, and it's gonna take you 20 years to get it. Now, of course, if you live past 85 and they keep paying you, that's then return on your money, but can you afford to live on $60,000 a year each year as inflation goes up. Think about this, your 60,000 sounds fine today, but again, it's your own money coming back. It's not return, it's your own money. Number two, in five years at just a 3% inflation each year, you just lost 15% purchasing power on that 60,000. That 60,000 never goes up. In 10 years, you've lost 30%. So ask yourself a simple question. Can you, in 10 years live on $40,000 or the equivalent of based upon inflation? Of course not. If you buy these annuities and you take these income riders, you are sticking yourself into a hole that you can't get out of. Not only will you have a huge back and surrender to get all your money back out one day if you want to, but you're also gonna get substandard returns if at any return, you're not gonna have any inflation protection. If you do make money, you're gonna pay higher income tax on the money that you do make it's a bad mistake. You've got a salesman, avoid annuities, go to resneywealth.com, 
Download that free report, Why Annuities Are Dangerous to Your Wealth and Retirement. It is a must read for any smart investor who really cares about their money and does not want to be sold by the annuity salesperson. I'm going to take a short break. I'll be right back with more of your questions after this. Hello, this is Brian Resney. If your goals are to increase your retirement income and retire without stress, go to my website and download our groundbreaking free report. This free report covers the investment and retirement pitfalls that are often overlooked even by the smartest investor. If you're concerned about outliving your money during retirement, or maybe you wanna make sure you're not leaving money on the table, this free report is for you. Know the facts. Your retirement depends on it. Go to my website, resneywealth.com, and download your free report right now. Hope you're joining today's program, and I hope you're sending us your email questions to Brian Resney at resneywealth.com. Visit our website, resneywealth.com, for all kinds of great information and reports. By the way, when you go to my website, you can check out our upcoming Adapt for Success, Investing for a Safe and Secure Retirement, perfect for pre-retirees and retirees. You can learn more about what I'll be discussing and times and availability at resneywealth.com. You can also sign up for instant email alerts about important market and economic uh, conditions or situations as they arise, and it is free at resneywealth.com. Steve from Naples, Florida. My broker wants me to buy an MFS bond fund, MFBFX, for 30% of my retirement portfolio. I don't feel he's looking out for me. What are your thoughts? Steve, great question. I am not a fan of most mutual funds because most mutual funds have really high expenses. What I would rather have you do is I would rather have you look at what's called an ETF. ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. There's, there's over 1,000 ETFs. You can look at ETFs for all different asset categories, whether it's stock, real estate, bonds, and everything in the middle. Instead of looking at that mutual fund, take a look at the iShares Aggregate Bond AGG. Fair disclosure, we currently own that in our portfolios at Resney Wealth Management, but it's an ETF. It has a cost structure, a fraction of that mutual fund. I believe it's better diversified. I think it's a better opportunity. But take a look at ETFs. Again, there's all different types of them in different income categories. And you're right, your broker is not looking out for you. A broker works under suitability. The broker actually legally works for his brokerage firm and does not work for you because he's working under suitability. The fund that you also asked the question about is a commission fund, which clearly tells me you're dealing with a broker. His interests are far different than yours. Find yourself a fee-only fiduciary money manager, Fire your broker. If you want real advice and real management, the only way to go is a fee-only fiduciary. To learn more about that, go to ResneyWealth.com and download our number one downloaded report, your number one investment risk, fiduciary versus suitability. Educate yourself. A smart investor can help protect their portfolio away from Wall Street conflicts and bad advice. Glenn from Miami, Florida. I have about 80,000 in a Roth IRA and I'm considering transferring it to the Matthew Fund or the Vanguard Energy Fund. This would be an investment that I could hopefully hold onto for the next 15 plus years, what do you think? What I would rather have you do, Glenn, kind of like my last caller, instead of using mutual funds, use exchange traded funds. And I don't think you have quite enough diversification there. I would rather have you stay mainly in the US. You can put a, a helping in the emerging markets. Uh, and instead of using either one of those two funds, because if you're gonna do a 50 split, you're gonna be too high of energy and you're gonna have too much exposure to emerging markets. I'd rather have you look at small and mid cap in the US for a portion of your portfolio. And then you could also look at a portion in emerging markets. ETFs are the way to go because you don't have the conflicts of Wall Street. You don't have the shenanigans of mutual funds and they're high cost and often they're underperformance. Brokers love mutual funds because it makes them more money. Brokerage firms love mutual funds. They'll tell you all the reasons to buy a mutual fund because again, it pays them more money. ETFs are a far better tool in the toolbox, exchange traded funds. To learn more about that and a lot more, go to ResneyWealth.com. 
Bill from Naples, Florida. I own shares of the Dirksion Daily Gold Miners Bull 3X NUGT. What do you think of that fund and what about gold overall? Bill, first off, I do not believe in leverage in a portfolio. What you're basically doing is you're buying a, a, a sector specific gold fund that basically is trying to track the price of gold and it, and it magnifies that loan amount by three times. So essentially, if gold does do well, yes, you can profit on the short term. But if gold does not do well, you could be headed south real fast and a whole bunch of money lost. I don't like levered funds. All I can tell you, I've been managing money for 28 years. I can tell you investors who use margin accounts through their broker, by the way, your broker loves you to do margin accounts because again, they can make more commissions and more fees. Margin accounts stay away from levered uh, ETFs or any investment where it deploys leverage, stay away from it. it. It may appear you might have the opportunity to make more money, but I often see investors lose a lot more than they ever make. Peter, Fort Myers, Florida. Are you advising uh, short and medium term bond holders to sell now? Peter, this is what I look at the, at the bond market. First off, most investors, generally speaking, do not understand bonds. Investors, if I do a survey of 100 investors who own bonds, most of those people would tell me bonds are safe. Bonds can have as much volatility depending on what kind of bond and the maturity as the stock market. A lot of volatility up and down. Uh, but generally speaking, if you own bonds in a low interest rate environment, I would rather be a three year maturity or less. Look at floating rate securities, which I think are a great opportunity. Um, we own areas in the floating rate security on the ETF side. Now I like that because in a rising interest rate environment, they won't get beat up like a typical long term bond fund would. Uh, many investors also are not looking at their bonds. I'll tell you a quick story. I had a recent client that I hired in my firm that was working with one of the major brokerage houses. By the way, this happens repeatedly every single month at my firm. I'll get somebody that comes in from a brokerage house, they have a whole bunch of bonds in their portfolio, they don't understand what's called a markup and markdown. They have a brokerage account. Legally, the broker can do what's called a markup and markdown on your bonds. What that means is a bond selling for 100, they sell it to you for 105, even though they paid 100 for it. They don't have to disclose that markup or markdown. Now, when you go to sell the bond, the bond's selling for 110, and they tell you they sold it for 105. That's a markdown. It steals and robs your return. Brokers do this all the time. If you go to finra.org and you research markup and markdown fines, you'll find just about every brokerage firm has been fined numerous times for excessive markup and markdowns when they're caught. They can mark up and mark down, they can't be excessive. So if you own bonds in your portfolio, if you're working with a broker, I can pretty much guarantee you, you're being taken to the woodshed on excessive markup and markdowns. You need to know the questions to ask. Don't think your broker is your buddy. Your broker's job is to sell you investments and represent his brokerage firm. Mark up and mark downs plague a lot of investors who own bonds. I can tell you that because I see it every month when we have new clients hiring my firm coming from the brokerage houses who finally get smart and realize that brokerage firm is not a fee only fiduciary and wasn't working in their legal best interest. Steve from Miami, Florida. What are your thoughts about bank loan funds like FFRHX? How does a fund like that compare to a high yield bond fund? Great question. First off, a high yield bond fund is one area that I would totally uh, stay away from in the investment market now. Two areas that I think are highly overvalued in the investment market. One is high yield bond funds, but investors are jumping into these because they're looking for higher yields. High yield bond funds are probably one of the most overpriced parts of the bond market and most investment sectors. The other one that I would be very suspect on are utility stocks. In my opinion, those are pretty overvalued also. So those are two areas I would really watch and, and, and warn investors on, especially the high yield side. But the difference between a bank loan fund, most high yield bond funds have maturities of eight, 10 or 12 year bonds in the, in the portfolio. Bank loan funds are usually 90 day paper, so it's a very short term. I like that as a part of an income portfolio in a low interest rate environment. At the end of the day, interest rates do matter and chasing yield for a little bit more could cause substantial losses in your portfolio when rates eventually start moving back up. So make sure you understand, don't chase yield, understand what you're buying before you buy it. Joan from Plantation, Florida. My financial advisor has a portion of my savings in an American Realty REIT. I heard, that, I heard previously uh, that non-traded REITs are toxic and they should be avoided. Also, what is the difference between a fee-only and fee-based? 
Great question, Joan. First off, non-traded REITs, you probably, what you're saying is, you've heard me talk before, never buy a non-traded REIT. There is no reason ever to buy a non-traded REIT unless your goal is to make your broker more money than you. Non-traded REITs are sold under suitability. Most non-traded REITs uh, have a haircut, meaning you put $100,000 into these things, the haircut is often 18 to 20% of your money off the top between commissions and underwriting fees. Then when you put your money in a non-traded REIT, your money's locked up for who knows, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. You have no liquidity. You're at the whim of the, the company then managing that REIT when they want to sell and give you your money back and you have no idea what you're going to get. You can look at publicly traded REITs that are completely liquid and 100% of your money gets invested when you invest in those. Your broker doesn't like them because they don't make 8 or 10% commissions on them. Your broker's working for himself. Never buy a non-traded REIT. Surefire way to find out you're being sold down the river is if you have non-traded REITs in your portfolio and if somebody's selling you annuities in your portfolio. That's a surefire way to find out that you've got suitability and a salesman who's not working in your legal best interest. And your other part of the question, a fee-only fiduciary is way different than fee-based. Almost all these brokerage firms today are getting into the fee-based side, meaning they kind of work uh, fiduciary, but they can have overlapping conflicts of interest that they have to disclose on their ADV form. Bottom line is this, the only true fiduciary is a fee-only firm. Wall Street, banks, and insurance companies are never fee only and never can be because they're broker dealers. They sell product, they generate commission, they underwrite product, they sell stuff that they manufacture, they have all kinds of side deals and everything else. If you want a real firm, fee only is the only way to go. To learn more about fiduciary versus suitability, go to resneywealth.com, download our groundbreaking report. It's your number one investment risk. 90% of investors make the costly mistake. They think their advisor's working in their best interest under fiduciary when they're really working under suitability. 90% of firms are working under suitability and are not fee-only firms. Go to resneywealth.com. I want to thank all of my uh, TV listeners for all your great questions. Make sure you visit our website. We do have some upcoming workshops, Adapt for Success, Investing for a Safe and Secure Retirement. To learn more about how to increase retirement income, how to protect your portfolio from the next recession, and a whole lot more. I'm gonna talk about that at my upcoming workshop. For times and availability, go to resneywealth.com. And of course, if you're unhappy with the advice you're receiving, call my firm for a consultation. There is a difference we invite you to experience it. Find out, take advantage of our 21 exclusive proprietary investment and retirement strategy analysis. Find out what strategies you're missing and what strategies you need to implement to help grow your portfolio. I'll see you next week.